I'd like to share these two, two jokes about Lutherans because they sometimes can seem somewhat significant. About Lutherans and change, how many Lutherans does it take to change a light bulb? Eight, seven to change it, and one to talk about how much you like the old light bulb better. You heard that, right? You can always tell a Lutheran you just can't tell them much in their mind. Okay. Can you recall a time in your life when you've had a very profound discussion or read a life-altering book? Maybe when you were younger, or maybe not too long ago, someone came and had a discussion with you and they talked to you about life and it was somewhat profound and touching. My previous church, uh, parents used to say they had a come-to-Jesus meeting with their teenagers. Do you ever have a come-to-Jesus meeting? Someone talk about something pretty heavy with you? Or maybe you read a book that, hey, this really changed my life. About nine years ago, I, I read the book Total Money Makeover, and it was really a profound change for me. Uh, I have all the couples that I marry read that book. <clears throat> I was talking to a seminary professor a few months ago and said, every seminarian should read it. Matter of fact, I think every college student should read it. Um, it just very made me think about money and the use of money and stewardship very differently. Now, if you buy a book and mention my name, I get, yeah, I get 10%. No, I'm just kidding. But it really is a, is a good, book, good book to read, something that's very quite profound. Um, Muse Family Vacations, um, over the years, I took my family a lot of vacations. We went to Disney and to SeaWorld and to amusement parks and water parks. But every time we went on vacation, my wife and I, we always wanted to make it something educational. So we've been to about 20 state capitals. So if we're in a state capital, we'll stop by and visit the state capitol building. Uh, it's, you, of course, it's free, but the architecture there, the history is there. Uh, something more profound than just uh, buying treats and amusing yourself at an amusement park. Something that's quite profound. Talking about profound, have you ever seen the movie Shawshank Redemption? Now, it wasn't a big hit when it came out, but it's been sort of a TV hit. It's like an all-time favorite TV movie, so if you haven't seen it, make sure you watch it. But the Shawshank Redemption actually filmed in Ohio over by Maslin and Mansfield. Uh, you can take tours of the prison, not that I've been there myself, but you can go see some of the sites there. But in the movie Shawshank Redemption, Andy Dufresne, is a prisoner who was framed and he's really innocent. Um, he got framed for murder that he didn't do. He, he got accused and framed for killing his wife. He might be a bad husband, he definitely was a murderer. And so he knew he was innocent, and so his goal was to escape from prison. Now, if you look up on the picture on the left-hand side, um, you see a Bible. The, the warden gave every prisoner a Bible, a King James Bible. What Andy Dufresne did is he, he ordered a little rock hammer he said he needed to chisel stuff, but he really used it to escape. And he put the hammer in a place that no one would look. Can anyone guess where he put the hammer? In the what? In the Bible he got. He knew nobody would look inside the Bible to find his what? His hammer. We'll get there later. So he hid it there because no one would look there. So talking about that, this is from Status. I looked at this this past week. Facts about Americans reading their Bibles 2018 to 2020. 30% of all Americans never read the Bible. Now, a lot of people know the Bible. A lot of people listen to what other people say about the Bible. But three out of ten Americans, they never read the Bible. Nine percent of Americans read it once a week. Nine percent of Americans read it once a month. The statistics don't get any better. Three percent of Americans read it three to four times a week. Only 11% of Americans read the Bible daily. <clears throat> it's most interesting Majority of American Bible readers are over the age of what? 70. So Andy Dufresne is right when he hid his hammer inside the Bible because very few people would read it there. There are some ways that God speaks his word to us. One way is through the spoken word. Like that's what's happening now. If you come hear a sermon, the word's being spoken to you. Or maybe somebody shared a Bible verse with you. Like, for God so loved the world that he gave his what? That, that's a spoken word. Or maybe somebody quoted scripture to you. That's a spoken word. God also speaks his word through the life and example of Jesus. Jesus is a living word. In the beginning, God created, God the Father created the heavens and the earth. And the Spirit, this Holy Spirit is hovering over the water. And God said, and that is Jesus. Spoken word right away in Genesis. The Father, the Son, and Jesus speak. So Jesus Christ, if you look at his life, you look at his example, that's his living word to us. Another way is involve yourself in baptism and Lord's Supper. When you come to Lord's Supper, you hear, given and shed for what? Take, eat, this is my 
you hear the word of God and remember your baptism in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And the last way is to read the written word. Now, I'm not sure where you are percentage-wise. Read the Bible. Somebody said, Pastor, I wish that God would talk to me. I said, he does. Read the Bible. No, 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 I mean out loud. Well, then read the Bible out loud. God will speak to you in the Bible. Read the written word. And so there are ways in which we interact with each other. Um, I'm a fan of Jordan Peterson. He's a Canadian psychiatrist, and he has some really good insights into, uh, into Scripture and about rules for life. And I like the one he mentions about listening. And he says this, Assume the person you're listening to might know something you don't. Well, I was talking to the trash collector. Well, that person knows something that we don't. Well, I was at Wendy's. I guarantee the server knows something that we don't. doesn't matter where you go, who you're with. Always assume the person that you're talking to knows something that you don't, that you can learn and be edified from. Even the Bible says this, out of the mouth of who? Babes. There's something about listening. And that leads us right into today's gospel lesson. Now, <clears throat> our Lord traveled around with his disciples, and how do he eat? Well, there wasn't like Taco Bells and McDonald's and Applebee's. But many women, and of course men, also prepared meals for our Lord. So Mary said, Jesus, why don't you come over for lunch? And I'll prepare you a meal, and she's grilling brats. Who knows what else they're having, stirring up iced tea. But Mary's, Martha's sister Mary showed up. And, and Mary, you can see us here, sat at Jesus' feet and what? Listen. Now, there's a couple ways in which we listen. One way of listening is, yeah, 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 get on with it. Get it over with, okay? I got more things to do. Another way of listening is, well, maybe if you're grabbing my attention, I'll pay a little bit closer attention. Another way of listening is I'm hanging on every word you say. So look at Mary. I think she's hanging on every word Jesus is saying. Now, Jesus is not thundering away at her, but notice he's teaching her, and notice how she looks at him. This is really about, I'm looking at someone that I can be edified from. This is my Lord speaking eternal truths to me, and she has taken it all in. Now, now Martha is rather upset. I mean, she's getting the brats around. She's getting lunch around. You know, she's stirring up the iced tea, and she says, Jesus. Let's go ahead and read what it says. So Mary sat there listening. So Martha says this. Martha said, Jesus, tell Mary to get to work. And this is Jesus' response. Read it with me. But one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. What did Mary choose? She chose to what? Listen. She chose to learn. She chose to grow. She chose that Jesus had something very profound to say to her. So God speaks his word to us, his spoken word, through the sacraments, through the written word, and through his own life. Mary chose what is better. Martin Luther says this, The Bible is alive. It speaks to me. It has feet. It runs after me. It has hands, lays hold of me. Friends in Christ, there are Bible verses that do that for you. I read this verse many years ago, Speak the truth in love, and it lays hold of me. Have I spoken the truth in love? Have I been mean to anyone? Speak the truth in love. Here's another Bible verse that runs after us, that lays hold of us, it has feet. Love your neighbor as your what? Have I loved my neighbor as myself? Have I been impatient with the elderly person in Walmart? Have I not taken time to listen to someone who I know had a rough week? That is another Bible verse. Or for God so loved the world that he gave his what? Does that run after you? Does that chase you? Does that let you know that you have salvation in Christ? Martin Luther said, the Bible speaks to me, has feet, and runs after me, his hands lays hold of me. He should know, know that. Martin Luther interpreted the whole Bible Every word from Hebrew in the Old Testament, Greek in the New Testament, into German nobility. He, he was a higher form of German that really unified the German language. So Martin Luther knows the whole Bible. He says certain verses come after me and they, they grab hold of me. They, they lay hold of me. For me, speak the truth in love. Love your neighbor as yourself. For God so loved the world. There's other verses that speaks to us of the word that we may read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest it. A couple of years ago, Ted Korber was here, and Ted Korber talks about Christians who mature in their faith. Want to mature in the faith? Take a Bible verse and read it and read it and read it and try to understand what it says. Speak the truth in love. I'll speak the truth, what's true and good, and I'll do so in a loving manner and do so that is gentle. That's how we mature. Take a Bible verse 
read it about 10 times, then apply it. I take that Bible verse, that's what Ted Korber says. I inwardly what? Digest the Word of God. Inwardly digest it. Read this. <clears throat> Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Um, so Jesus spoke that to Satan when Satan said, Jesus, if you're hungry, turn these stones into bread. And Jesus says, man shall not live by what? By the word of God, the word of God that feeds and sustains us. Read that. Teach me your way, O Lord. Full cups can't receive anything. People who know it all can't learn anything. A know it all will never say, I can't learn anything from the trash collector. I can't learn anything from that babe. I can't learn anyone, anything from the attendant at Wendy's. I already know it all. God, teach me. Teach me your ways. Then we have the, the parable of the sower. Remember the sower throws seeds? And some falls on rock, and some falls in shallow soil, and some falls among thorns, and some falls on good soil. There's all sorts of excuses why people can't read the Bible. I'm too busy. I have a lot going on today. My life's too busy. My life's too complicated. You know what an excuse is? An excuse is a polite lie. Samuel Clemens said that people who are good at making excuses usually aren't good at anything else. All sorts of reasons not to read the Bible. Same thing in Jesus' day. Nothing's changed. Some fell among rocks. No one could hear it. Some fell among thorns. It couldn't grow. Some fell in shallow soil, burned up. God's word still is sent out and still speaks. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, light unto my path. You heard what I said about Dave Ramsey. Is there a Bible verse that touched you? That's a lamp and a light to you? His word will make us wise for salvation. No other word will. We know Jesus lived and died for us. For these things are written that you may believe and that by believing you may have life in his name. John chapter 20, verse 31. And read this verse, John 6, 33. Can you read it with me? My word is spirit and is of life. So next week I'm on a doxology training. I went to the first doxology training a number of years ago. This is how someone explained it to me. That his word is a spirit and life. You ever been in a hospital and a loved one's having major surgery? You've been there? Can you relate to that? Now, now in the Peoria area, they hand us these little beepers like you get at Applebee's. And your loved one's in surgery and it goes off. It means come to the consultation room. And I've been there many times. There's a real big surgery going on. And finally, the family is asked to come to consultation and surgery's over. So there's two doors to the consultation room. One door the family comes in. We all sit at a table. And who comes in the other door? You know who. What? The surgeon? And you cut the tension with a knife. The family doesn't know what to expect. And the surgeon usually comes in and shares what happened. And most of the time, thank God, it's rather positive. And you can cut the tension with a knife, and the surgeon says, your loved one came through surgery as best as possible. Everything went well, and you get to see him about an hour. And you can feel the tension what? Leave? Friends in Christ, that's not information, that's proclamation. God's word is proclamation. God's word is proclamation. For God so loved the world, he's proclaiming that to you. Speak the truth in love, it hits our heart and soul. Love your neighbor as yourself, that's something that we do. It's spirit of life. God's word is. <clears throat> Let's go back to Stats uh, and Shawshank Redemption. In the movie Shawshank Redemption, remember he had that Bible with the rock hammer in it? The unique thing is he started cutting open the Bible in the book of Exodus. <laughs> sort of cool. But the warden wrote on the insert of the Bible, salvation lies within. And Andy said, this is what Andy said. I'll, I, can, I wrote it down here. You are correct, salvation lies within. Salvation lies within. For him, the hammer that let him free, and for us, eternal life. And ready about Statista, 56% of all Americans are interested in what? Reading the Bible. It's fascinating. It sounds odd, but the devil tempting Adam and Eve is rather a fascinating story. Noah's Ark is a rather fascinating story. Jesus confronting the Pharisees. A lot of depth there. 56 per all Americans would be interested in reading it. The Bible's exciting. It's life-changing. It's wonderful. Martin Luther wrote this. The Bible is the source book. The living water from where God speaks through men through the word. He speaks through the Bible to us, his grace and his blessings. So may the word of God take center stage in our lives and homes. Open up and read it. In our church, and in our school, and in our preschool. They take center stage his word that is of life and is of spirit. So how about this for a closing thought after we heard the word of God? Can you all read it with me? Speak, O Lord, your servant listens. 
Let your word to me come near. Newborn life and spirit give me. Let each promise still my fear. Death's dread power, its inward strife, wars against your word of life. Fill me with love's strong fervor that I cling to you forever. And after hearing God's word, all God's people say,